This is the best way to track your gut health. As a functional medicine practitioner focusing on people with IBS type symptoms, I often get questions about what's the best way to track my gut health? Are there any objective tools we can use to measure if it's getting better or worse? And if you're looking to know the answer to those questions, then this video is for you. Stool tracking or poop tracking is something I've been doing for years now on myself. And I thought it'd be a cool exercise to take you all through my results from March of last year to this past month where I just went through another round of, of stool tracking. I don't do this all the time, but I think it's cool to do it for 30 days at a time just to get a sense of what's going on in, in your life. All right, so on the left here, what you're gonna see is my poo keeper report from this time this year. And on the right, next to where my face is, is you're gonna see the results from March of last year. And this was a super cool exercise for me because I'm somebody who loves to geek out over gut health and I'm always looking for objective ways that I can monitor not only my own gut health, but the gut health of all my patients. So if any of you out there are looking for, you know, how can I track gut health objectively? Because everyone's always talking about, I need to work on gut health, it needs to be better, but how can I actually track it? And tracking stools is one of the most powerful tools you can use, because hopefully it's something you're doing every day and enough times to start to really see changes and to start to compare changes and figure out kind of what led to some of those changes. So I'm gonna go through mine. The first thing that jumps off the bat for me is the fact that I had nearly 20% more poops in March of last year compared to March of this year. And I can speculate on a couple reasons why. I was doing more intense exercise. At this point last year, I was eating more fibrous and plant material. And you can also see that my average duration, which is just the amount of time between bowel movements, was a little shorter last year, right here. And I think that's driven again by more intense exercise. And honestly, I'm not really sure what else is driving that. It basically shows that my transit time or how long it took food to go through me was faster. So my, my prevailing theory is that it was the intense exercise I was doing. So type one through seven are a way to classify what your poop looks like. And I'll put a picture of it here on the screen on the left here. And three and four are considered normal. So thankfully, both months, year to year, I had about the same amount percent normal. But you can see March of this year, I had more type ones and twos. And those are more on the constipative end. So it seems like I was a little more constipative this year compared to last year. And you can even tell based on the percentage of slow poops relative to the total number. I think I had 11% of my stools this year were slower in terms of how fast it took to come out when I got on the toilet. Whereas last year it was only about 5% of them were slow. So again, more reinforcing information that last year my gut may have been functioning a little more regular. It may have been a little more normal. And some other cool things that I found was, so I would, on the notes section on both sides here, I would always document if a stool happened after coffee. And literally on both March of this year and March of last year, it was about 20% or one in every five of my poops was after coffee. So I, I thought that was, that was super cool to see that it was pretty much the same a year later. And around March of last year, I was eating a lot of beets one of the foods that I'm not really eating as much now. Honestly, I don't know why, it's kind of just laziness. Every time I would have beets, I would see some beet remnants in my stool, or there would be a red tint to the stool. I'm not sure if this is problematic or not. I've done some research to show that that's just the skin of the beets that's maybe a little undigested. That could be the insoluble fiber of the skin, which is contributing to the color. Or maybe there was some digestive imbalance going on within my gut at that point. Based on my stool habits, I think my digestion was functioning pretty well. But I think the most impactful and the, the biggest thing I took away from this is that in March of this year, this past month, I had four days where I didn't have a bowel movement. And what I try to preach to people and what I, the goal I try to have everyone shoot for is to have at least one bowel movement a day. Three of the four that I didn't have a bowel movement were on Sundays. For me, Sundays are different. I don't drink coffee, I don't work out, and there's a lot less stress in my life, so maybe there's some bowel regulation going on. But I was also doing this a year ago in March. I think I was 
No, I think I was still having coffee on Sundays a year ago. But I, in March of last year, I never, never had a single day without a bowel movement. Every single day I had a poop. So that to me was, hmm, something I'm doing now, maybe I need to start incorporating more of the stuff I was doing a year ago to get my stools back up to par. All right, thank you all for turning in to another YouTube video. If you're interested in learning more about poop stuff or IBS or gut health related things, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna keep seeing stuff like this. If you all will excuse me, I need to go add to my poop results column.